little bit of a different format tonight. Um, we're going to do a series of short talks. Uh, next month we should have a speaker, uh, Josh Smith from Rubber City Wizards. Uh, he works with Jonathan Penn. Not sure what he's going to talk about yet, but it should be good. Uh, he's presented at Code Mash and other things. So let's see. All right. So I'm going to talk quickly, as quick as I can, about Reveal, because I only have about 10 minutes. Uh, Reveal's a Mac app for um, visually inspecting your app at runtime. So think of it as Firebug uh, for iOS. It's made by a company in Melbourne uh, called Itty Bitty Apps. Pretty good group of guys. Met them at WWDC. They also run the Melbourne Cocoa Heads, and uh, they're about twice the size of us. They have 80 people every month and have to turn people away. But we're catching up. So why inspect? So one reason you might want to inspect uh, your UI is to find things like view accumulation. So t you can easily and quickly see whether or not your table cells are being reclaimed or not, um, which can identify a big performance issue. Um, it shows you things off screen too. Yep. Cool. And I'll show another example of that soon. You can see how your UI views are structured. And this is that screen kind of broken out. And you can kind of see it's a little bit hard with the lights here, but you can see that the navigation actually goes off screen and is actually a scroll view. You can also inspect individual elements. And uh, in this case, you can see the touch target for that button and see that there is plenty of space for it. It's not too small. Um, that's not something you can obviously visually inspect at the, with the app at runtime without a tool like this. Uh, so that's very handy. I actually had a similar issue to this earlier today, in fact, uh, where I had some buttons in a UI view in a table cell, but uh, the content view was not expanding auto-sizing appropriately. So the view that those buttons were in were a lot smaller than where the buttons were actually located. So I was able to see that the UI, the content view wasn't expanding properly. You can also use this to decompose third-party components and see how they're put together. So here we have um, some stock components and then broken down. You can see how things are stitched together, how Apple's creating their components uh, with different layers. And even a little bit more detail. I've got a, there's a quick video here. Maybe. No sound. I didn't get its play. Ah, it's starting. I am running beta software here, so bear with me. And I'll give you a live demo of this in a second, but uh, this gives you kind of a 3D look into your, your app. Let me switch over to Xcode. Or You can see it, but I can't. So in order to use Reveal, you've got to put it into your application. Uh, so it's a library that you put in your application. You can go through and put in the libraries and add the search path and headers and all that stuff to your project. Um, or you can just use CocoaPods <laughs> and add one line to pot, do pod install and you have reveal in your app. And it's not 
looking right now. Sorry, I can't see that on my screen. A few minutes earlier today and put together a really quick app. That uh, it's meetup.com pulls the RSVP list and just displays it in the table view. So this is my app running here. And then to connect reveal to the app. Um, Reveal and your simulator have to be on the same network, but once they're on the same network, um, Reveal will find the apps running, and you just select it from the list, and it shows up. So it works just on the simulator? Um, it might work with, sure with the it. devices as well, but I'm not, not completely certain. And you can go click here, go in the 3D mode, and move it around. Uh, it does not do live updating, so if I move things around in the app, I have to click the refresh button up here. Uh, but I can, and this is really painful to do it up here. But so oh, you mean like it takes a snapshot? Yeah. But I can go in and, if I can see it, I can actually go and chain, select elements in here and change them at runtime. And you can see that in the simulator as well. So you, you can inspect different attributes of those controls and change them. I'm not sure what the value of that is. I mean, it's not like it's going to save it for next time. But if you want to <coughs> play around and, and try different things, um, it might be a faster turnaround time than stopping making the code change, running it again drilling back down into where you were in the app. So it might be a quick and easy way to play around with different colors or different. Well, I can see it helping with like opacity, especially because you tweak, keep tweaking it. Yep. And play around with colors. You can play around with sizes of things. So I can change the size of that label. These are auto fitting um, to size right now. So if I, I can actually change the text and it will truncate it, or <coughs> I can tell it to auto size. Um, so this is beta right now. Um, beta 0 0.83 is the current version. My mouse is over here somewhere. Um, so that's the demo. It's open beta, revealapp.com, or reveal underscore app on Twitter. Um, I'm sure they'd love to hear from you if you have ideas. Uh, there's another competitor out there called Spark Inspector. We might do a demo of that another time. Um, Reveal is definitely a lot slicker. Uh, they've definitely put a little bit more attention to the look and feel and the interactions. Spark also has the ability to watch for window notifications. So view will appear, appear and things like that. So if you need to debug when things are happening, or like I don't know if you have a, one of those uh, slide-out menus. Different libraries um, won't necessarily call view will appear, but that might not be an obvious thing. So it could be a handy tool. Um, Reveal doesn't do that yet, but I'm sure it's coming. All right, that's it for me. Thanks. Doug, you want to go next? Sure. Since you're right there. Uh oh. Sorry. Oh, are you going to be able to connect? Um, you can do airplay, right? Yeah, I can do airplay. I think that's all I need. Hi. I'm going to talk about uh, App Cooker and App Caster. Uh, but before, and I don't have slides, I'm just going to do some 
live stuff, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it always goes so well. I, I'm a glut for punch, but I keep trying over and over. Um, but uh, what it is, it helps, uh, you know, and I've just begun playing with it. Um, we're, my son, my other son and I are working on an app, and Jess is helping us work on the design. She had some stuff for us, and so I said, hey, this app looks cool, so I kind of threw it in there to try it out on the device. And it, it's, I think it's useful, and I'll show you that in a minute, but, uh, you know, what, what do you guys do for prototyping, for those of you for prototyping in an app in particular? What's your first step usually, if you got an idea? Yeah, draw it out paper, right? I mean, because it's convenient. I use a whiteboard of paper. So, you know, I got, I got a stack of scrap paper because I'm always printing stuff. And you print 30 pages to look at two, right? And it's like, what am I going to do with this now? So I got this big, thick, so I'm always scribbling or whatever. And that's my favorite way to start prototyping. That's probably, you know, because it's quick, right? And you can throw it away and get rid of it. Um, how many of you have tried prototyping apps either on the web, like a Balsamic or... Um, there was one on the iPad that I have that I kind of like, mock-ups, and there's probably dozens of them. There's all kinds of things out there, and I probably own 20 of them. Um, but I don't use any of them because they don't, they're not as convenient to me as paper. And, you know, not that, you know, you certainly don't want to prototype in Xcode in the sense that you start diving in and writing your real app. It's certainly worth trying things just to see if snippets of things, you know, that's worth doing. But, uh, App Cooker is the close, again, it's not perfect, it's got some flaws, they're still working on it, but it's the one I l that uh, stays, for me, I can do things quicker in it, and I think I might actually use it. You know, I was we talking with Alex before, you know, things like Reveal App, I, I downloaded it, I haven't tried it yet, it looks really cool. Uh, my problem is that, you know, again, I buy software, I try things probably like most of you, and you say, oh, that looks really useful, but you never really work it into your workflow. And, um, and that's okay, you've got to try new things. But I think this one may actually get stuck in my workflow. I'm not sure yet. I've only been playing with it for a couple of weeks. But it's called, the, the, uh, the reason I got it was I hadn't heard much about it, but it was on the day when things went free. What was that? Um, several things went free. They went half price. They were a $40 app on the iPad, and they went to $20. And I said, ah, 20 bucks. you know, that's like you know, dinner in a movie or, or lunch in a movie, not even dinner, for one. So why not? So I tried it, and uh, I was, it, again, it's worthwhile. Um, let me see if I can connect up here. I'll show you the beginning of the app. Um, and I'm forever... I don't I, I need an Air, Apple TV at home so I know how to do this. So, so how to turn AirPlay on this again? Settings? Double tap. Double tap. Double tap, scroll over. Oh, thank you. All right. There we go. And right. comfy couch is the way. There we go. Comfy couch. Thank you. And mirroring would be appropriate, right? Yeah. All right. There we go. Cool. And let's see here. App cooker. Let me go. You can start off here. I'll give you a quick just kind of overview of what the screens are. I haven't used a lot of the screens. The idea behind the app is it's he, he tries to put, or they, I don't know who they are. Um, they give you several work areas to keep track of your app ideas. It's kind of a the, take your brainstorm, not to a finished product, you know, because this is not like briefs. Or one of those things where it's designed to go from sketches and prototypes all the way to finished assets. You know, for me, I don't want a I don't want a tool that does that. So, you know, I want a tool that helps me think and helps me get things. You know, that I would normally scratch on paper. You know, the the, the downside of scratching things on paper, the whiteboard, is that interaction, right? You know, where you can't see. You know, I, yeah, I see how that is, and you know, cards are great, but you know, to see how it actually feels in your hand, you want to run something, and that's why I think I will like this. So I haven't used a lot of these extra things. He's got a notepad. He's got some different things in here. You know, you keep track of, you know, your business plan. Again, I have no idea if those things are worthwhile at all because I looked at the screens. I said, ah, I just want to do this. I just want to make a mock-up. So what it is, is just you create screens in here, and it's got widgets and all those kinds of things. And then you can, the nice thing about it, though, is you can quickly throw some screens together, and you can quickly link them together. So that you, and then you can export this to Dropbox or whatever and pop it up on your phone or, your, or another iPad or on the same one in their free um, runtime, and you can run it, run those screens again. Uh, and we'll do that live here. Um, in fact, well, go ahead and make a new one here. Let me go back. Well, let's start. Let's make a plus. I guess that would be the right thing, right? New project. There we go. Uh, it's got, again, one of the things that not real crazy about you can't switch your project once you start, but as far as the, the device, so we'll start with an iPhone 4, and let's make, um, we're going to track butterflies, because butterflies are cool. So we're going we're 
we're going to have a butterfly tracking app. I come in here, tap, tap. All right, so it gives me an initial screen, you know, and I can put as many screens in here as I want. Oops. You know, landscape, you know, um, portrait, whatever, you know. So I can either lay it all out screen like this and go into each one. Once I bring up a single screen, I can, um, you know, they got widgets over here. You know, the standard kind of idea that any wireframe does. So I can go in here and say, well, I'm going to put a table in here. I'll take this table. Oops. Put it in there. Yep. Drag it on. You know, again, if you've used any kind of prototyping app, you know, it's got all those kinds of things in here, right? So you can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. You know, I'm certain. And when you drag them, they extend. So I'm going to put a button on here. And oops, I'm still used to trying to do the drag thing. You know, these have characteristics. You can uh, rotate them, spin them, change the size by hand. You can see across the top. I'm pointing here, but you. There we go, I can tap and, you know, so you, lots of things you can do with it um, if you want to. Uh, you can also just drag the handles like you would expect. So, but the useful thing then is I tap this bucket, bucket button, can't even speak tonight, and uh, I want to say when I tap this button, I want to go to screen two. And then, oops, and there's a, the smart button has an automatic kind of like the segues, automatic rewind, you know, to go back. So you can call the same screen from different places, and when you tap back, it'll go back. So it's, it gives you the option that you can make the button, you know, kind of spring back or not. But the, let me go back here. So now if I run this somewhere in here, I can say done with this screen. And let's say, oops, let's run it. And sideways, because I didn't do it right, but that's all right. And I tap the button. Oh no. Problem with live demos. I got fingerprints on I don't Hello. <laughs> That's nice. Go on, come back in, see if that All right. So that was cool. Crash or stuck. Um It may be more of a beta version than anything else, but let me try it again here. Get back in. I don't even know where it's at on here. There it is. Open up my butterfly app. Open up my screen. Open up this screen. There we go. Uh, my target. Okay. Let me try and run it again. Honestly, this was working. I don't know if it's the air play, but, uh, or if I didn't do it right. Let me open one that it, uh, does exist already. There we go. Double two finger double tap got me back here. So it wasn't stuck. I just didn't remember how to get out. So I'm not sure why that wasn't playing. I'm going to go back and show you the one that I kind of threw together in a few minutes. What happened was Jess is doing some design work for us, and so I had she. Um, Basic uh, were these cards or whiteboard? I can't remember what it was. She uh, index cards. So she took pictures just to show me, right? Because we're working through these ideas together. Uh, and uh, so I had Ryan snip them out um, into roughly iPhone size and throw them in here and then link together a little app or the little thing. And it really didn't take too long. So now I can run this. You guys get to see the first uh, version of this, right? Assuming it works. So you know, I click that as you tap. And again, setting those up are just those links behind things. You know, and you can do the trans. You know, it gives you options and the transitions and all the things you might want to see. But what it does is lets you pop up your um, your device and quickly try whether you like the feel of it. And it really only takes a few minutes, and that's why I like it. And the other thing you see here is, uh, and I won't do this live, but um, one nice thing I like to be able to do is sketch. So if I wanted to go in here, f for instance, on my phone or on the iPad, and you know, bring up one of my little drawing apps, and I'm not very good at drawing at all. But I draw a little picture. I, um, do I have to? Well, I won't do that. And then, and I can save it to Dropbox or whatever. You know, do whatever I want to do with it. So now I come back to here, and I go back. You know, I can make a new screen. Oops. Let's do. That's not 
Wait, what? Do a portrait because that's the picture I have. So I go back to this screen, edit, and now I can say load in from Dropbox and say there's my picture I just scribbled on my phone, either on my phone or on my, oh, use image, I guess. So now I can sketch out a lot of things real fast with just a drawing program or whatever, or, on, or do it on a whiteboard, take some pictures. And again, it doesn't take very long at all, right? And as long as it, the only hard part is making sure they're close enough to the right size. So I can sketch out a lot of ideas on paper, quickly throw them into here just as images, and instead of putting buttons on here, now I can go in, they have um, smart areas or something they call it, I can't remember. I'll find it in here. There's a little... Uh, Link, there we go. Yeah, so it's, I can add a link area, so I can say, oops, my fingers. Basically, I could do the same thing you do with a button. I just overlay this on all my little hand-drawn things and make those tappable that can take me to another screen. And that's all we did with those sketches that she had for us. And it really, you know, other, the only thing that took a while was, the thing that took the most time was taking the one big JPEG and cutting it out. And then threw it in here, linked them all together. And I find that very useful. Um, I, intellectually, I find that very useful. And it was useful in this case. So I think I will start doing this more often than I've done on many of the other prototyping tools that I have. I won't, to be honest, I won't spend a lot of time dropping real widgets in here. I'll do this. I'll draw sketches or I'll take pictures or sketches or Photoshop things that somebody else gives me. And I'll throw them in here and just link them together to see if I like how it feels. Because that's what I want to find out. You know, I can already tell if I like how it looks, right? You see the image you know, one screen. What I want to do is, do I like the way they link together? Do I like the behavior? You know, it's not perfect, but, you know, it's cheap. It's 20 bucks, right? The, the taste app, Taster app is free, and I can, tr you can actually try things out with them, not much effort, and that's what I like about it. So, any questions? Do you know if there's a, a little widget that will, instead of taking to another screen, hide or show other smaller areas? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, so there'll be some similar tools in, in Yeah, my, my perspective, I mean, I don't, it doesn't look like it from what I remember and what I saw, probably not. Um, and again, everybody does development things differently and prototyping differently. My take on this, this is all throwaway stuff, right? This is to validate an idea and then throw it away. So it's most of the, most of the things I do in here, I wouldn't even keep. I'll, you know, you keep them around just because it's easier not to, it takes two seconds less time to not delete it than it does to delete it. Then you get like 30 and then you, then you go and just delete them all. So I don't anticipate keeping things around as artifacts of anything. It's more, much more of help me. It's a thinking tool for me. And uh, so if, if that's what you use it for, I think it's a good one. But if it's something that you, um, if you need something more involved, it may not be the right tool. Um, but, uh, and I think there's other ones that do this kind of thing. But this is the first one I've spent any time on. So. So. Yeah? Is it easy to share these things? So oh, yeah. So like. So I go out here, I think I go back, share, I can export this, oh, that's the wrong. I'm not sure I like the, their organization, I guess it's not bad. So now I can export the whole thing to Dropbox or whatever. So and, can they, then, if they yeah, and if you have app taster, now if I have access to the same Dropbox or shared Dropbox, I just go into, it's like, let me do that. Um, I have to disconnect this one first. Before I can turn the other one on. Okay. So, oh, so we can have dueling airplanes. Is that how that works? Oops, I don't want to lock that. Where is it on my iPhone? I thought I was. Maybe I'm on. Oh, I'm on LTE. Let me s sign in. Yeah, slide. I think I. Oh, no, I don't. This is Unicorn Office, right? Yeah, you can. It's trivial. Yeah. I don't really have to show you this. But, you know, being mule headed sometimes, I, I will. Okay. There we go. So, comfy couch. And the, you know, obviously, the app case that runs on the iPad as well. Um, let's see. Yeah. 
So I can say import. Um, oops. That looks so that's your class? Yeah. Oh. There we go. Import from Dropbox. I don't know what that import button. Again, this, they, they have some things, and so then I... Sure, why not? Um, there it is. Well, I never exported it, did I? Duh. But anyway, it works. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I can show you it on here. <laughs> I'll show you it running. I have an honest face, right? Um... Oh no! You know what? This is a new phone. I got a. I love the Apple Store. I dropped my phone and I broke my camera lens. I walked in Wednesday morning and walked out with a brand new one. Didn't cost me a dime for the phone. Cost a lot. Nathan bought a new 27-inch monitor, so. So I guess in that sense they made money. There's a moth up here. So I don't have that project on here anymore, but it does work. Yeah, cookers. Cookers are the one you buy, and taster is the free one. And so, uh, and um, I think um, it's iPad only for cooker because obviously you need the space to design stuff. But other questions? If you do like make a mock-up on that, mm -hmm. you, let's say you like it, is there any way to make, make it extra compatible? Oh no, that's the thing. It's it's it really is throwaway so kind it's of. Just throwaway it stuff? yeah. Okay. It is purely. Uh, in the way I view it, it's it's a convenient way to use paper-like tools okay. on the iPad. Um, it does have some other utilities like pricing and localization. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of the things in the app that I haven't even looked at. You know, kind of keep again. It's the uh, you, you got an idea. This is to help you flesh out the idea. So, oh, I I don't have anything else to share. If uh, everybody's done. Who's next? Dominic or Darren? I think Dom's coming. Oh, I'm not, I, I don't know if he's going to say it. He's leaving us. He's going to Chicago, he told us. So we'll all cry after he's done with this presentation. He'll come back once more. <laughs> Change the input on this. Oh, I can air play. I can. Yeah, that might be easier. All right. So I'm doing a demo or presentation on Node.js, which is a automation tool that runs a lot easier from the command line versus instruments. Um, so this is their web page, and it's fairly simple to just pull it down. Um, and all you need to do really is just copy the project file so you can run the executable. You don't have to include anything into your project file or anything like that. Um, so basic test case writing, um, you have your test name, function, and this is all within their library. You can kind of see more how they uh, define their tests and all that. You have your basic assertions, equal, not equal. Um, so all your fairly basic uh, test cases and which would be used to, used to in unit testing. Um, some slightly more uh, involved assertions, things like retry, which takes a, a function with, that can contain multiple asserts and it, you can you can manipulate the retry on delay times, how many times you want to try try um, that same function. Um, then the more involved things are like asserting specific windows as well as elementaries and images. And those get a bit more involved. <coughs> and the one weird thing is that it normally takes your derived data as its reference for the app. So we normally just do a Xcode build and just put in some sort of easy to find directory. Um, and of course, you have your uh, device families if you're doing universal. And then the tune up command line. Um, we've run into some command line obstacles trying to integrate into our build server. 
The biggest one is it trying to take over a different process into the simulator. Um, so one workaround with Jenkins servers, you expose certain ports and you turn off different security <laughs> settings, which was all kind of really funky. Uh, so one workaround we found was changing your sudo permissions to allow this your one user to run the spe specific command line. Uh, so that kind of is the more, I guess, secure way to get around that. Um, and that's about it um, as far as the overview of what TuneUp is. And I guess it's, it'll be a lot easier to show you what it does. So I've put together a very simple app here. All it does is, I'll run this. And it's fairly simple. You have a modal that you can kind of test against and then handling alerts. <coughs> and all the test cases are in JavaScript, just like it would be in the automation. I've put together a pretty simple test suite. And so this first one, I don't know if I can do presentation style. You guys can see that. No. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's app code. All right. So the next best thing is to just. Is that big enough? Um, so, because of how it runs on the uh, command line and the simulator itself, there are a lot of weird timing issues that you'll run into, especially navigating between views. So there's two approaches that you can take to it. One is doing a delay for whatever seconds, um, but it's not as smart as instruments. will retry until an assertion is done. Um, and the other one is actually using their their retry function, which is right here. And again, retry just takes a function and it runs through that multiple times until it's, it starts to true. And so I've pre-built a lot of things so that we can just run them. I've done multiple builds for both iPhone and iPad. So this is running the iPhone. You can see the command line itself um, show everything that it does. And so in this particular test case, I'm doing a retry and the alert to is supposed to be random and then we'll just keep checking until it gets the alert one that it wants and then then I'll evaluate to true. And then with universal apps, it's always fun to make sure it works on both form factors. Um, so this is doing the same thing, running the same test scripts against the iPad version.
And the nice thing about this too is it will generate uh, an instrument's run inspector. So you can actually view it how you would in instruments, which would be here with your trace. And you, you can also see how those work as well. Being able to see the trace logs as well as anything it's showing here as well. Um, the other nice thing about this too is you can get it to generate an XML file. So if you're running a build server that looks at XML files to generate reports, um, it does that for you automatically after each run. And that's about it really. Um, so some of the weird things are, so here's what I've been doing for handling alerts. And all it is is basically a callback block. Um, then you can add assertions to to make sure your alerts are right. And then choose buttons uh, to press. And that's what I do here for the alert two, which is supposed to be a bit more of a kind of make sure you get the right alert. Um, and that's about it, really. I'm not very good at doing tech demos. Yeah, we've. I haven't. In, <laughs> I haven't included any of those. Um, so if you are testing some automated tests against an app that uses network calls, that's where retry really comes in handy, um, because then you can just retry, keep retrying, until you actually get that result back. Um, I can actually show you here. And the assertions. It's kind of hard to see. So you're using this for production apps? Um, I've done s some of it in production using it against the Kroger app. Um, very little, though, because we don't have much time to play with it. Uh, but so here's the retry function that you can customize. Um, so you can set your max tries and delays as much as you want. Um, but once it hits that, then it'll automatically fail it. So that's the only, I guess, bad thing is if you just want to keep it running, um, then you set just set that to some ridiculous number. Um, yeah, and so I've been, and it follows most you know test case writing. So you can extract a lot of things out into a different JavaScript file and just reference those. Um, but overall, it follows most of Apple's documentation on UI automation JavaScript core. So you can also reference all of those from the Apple Docs. Is this uh, purchasable, open source? It's open source. It's free. You just download it from GitHub, and you can get basically get it. He, rec he recommends using Boken for a runner, um, but I haven't found any issues just running the test runner. No. This is kind of a companion to it. The nice thing about this is it wraps up the assertions, uh, so you can do a bit more natural language assertions or things you're used to in unit testing. Mm -hmm. So assert equals versus doing a if you know element equals something break. One of the challenges with UI automation is Apple doesn't provide you with a command line tool to actually start the test. Yeah, normally, if you wanted to log uh, failures, it's, I think, UIA logger dot log. You can do message or exception. But basically, that's what you'd use to okay. figure out what what fails. So this is just kind of a, a lot nicer. Here's, here's what I want to test. Does it work? I would like to. Um, hopefully, the development cycle there will allow a bit more time. But since I'll be working at a startup, it's going to be as fast as possible. Um, but it's a 
good companion to unit testing. You can do very simple stuff. Um, like for the Crow graph, I wrote very simple sign in, sign out test cases um, that just work from the home screen. Um, but we're still running into issues running it off <laughs> Team City. So if you're just doing it off of your own machine or a build server that you can just tap into directly on the command line, it works really well. But if you're doing something like Team City or Jenkins, there are a bit more workarounds that you have to find. And Stack Overflow has a pretty decent thread going on uh, automation and working off of that. Cool. This is not like a unit testing tool. Like you wouldn't want to do a search. No. Because generally, then you, the user couldn't see, especially with the testing and stuff that you can interact, interact with and see. So you don't want to like, do any data validation or something else. It's really not what's designed for. Yeah, and a lot of it taps into the accessibility settings. Um, and Jonathan talks about this in his book as well as when he was here. Um, so for the simple app, I just made sure I set certain accessibilities to be what I want it to be. So making sure the alert buttons I labeled as alert 1, alert 2. Um, so that's one way you can also tap into your elements. And then I've put everything on GitHub. So if you want to play with it more or see what I did, you can. It's a very very thin example, but it is what it is. This will be uh, pretty quick because I took lightning to mean a literal lightning fast. <laughs> That's sub second. Yeah. Do you mind airplane? Airplane? Sure. Okay. No slides, um, just notes and notes. <laughs> I <laughs> um, want to talk real quick about Shenzhen. Um, has anybody heard of that? Other than the city. It's a uh, command line tool, so I know we have some command line fans here. Um, but uh, it's part of a, a set of command line tools uh, created by Matt Thompson called Nomad. And I think Peter talked about one of these, Cupertino, a while back. Um, that one is basically to show your, uh, it kind of integrates with the Apple Dev website, which has been down all afternoon. So I was going to show a little bit of that too, but uh, it's still down. Um, Houston, um, this is push notifications. So I think the intent here is if, if you want to do continuous integration or anything um, from the command line or some enhanced build scripts, this is a great set of tools to go out there and get you running quickly. These are all Ruby gems. Um, the one I focused on was this last one, and this is um, a pretty simple build tool. It just lets you build things quickly, build your app, and then uh, ship it off to either a test flight or to, uh, to Hockey App or to an FTP site. Um, documentation is pretty good, but I did run into some issues, so I'll try to talk about that briefly. Um, first note is it does require uh, Ruby 1.9 or greater and that was newer than the version that was installed, the system version. So um, my first struggle, because I'm not a Ruby guy, um, was getting that those dual versions set up. So I used RB E and V for that. And uh, does anybody else use that? I'm, I know, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, is is there a better tool, or is that your favorite one for managing dual? Yeah, it's it's better than our Okay. Okay. It seemed to work pretty well, and uh, but it did take several uh, commands to get it up and running. I, I had Homebrew installed before that, and I used basically the set of commands to get RB EMV set up, brew update, and that just updates Homebrew, and then I installed RB EMV. Um, then installed the, the Ruby build thing, um, listed out the versions, 
I decided to install this 1.93. There's a newer 1.9.3. This is the one I, I took. Rehash just kind of uh, tells RBE and V to kind of reevaluate what you just installed. It uses this set of shims to basically do some clever things with the path. Um, and then this just uh, sets it up in your path, um, set, sets the version number up so that when you uh, use Ruby from that point forward, it uses that version. So it's, it's pretty slick if you want to manage like three or four or however many versions of Ruby, this is a good tool to use. Oh, and uh, Maverick ships with Ruby 2.0, so you can Okay. Cool. At least with this. Haven't installed Mavericks yet. <laughs> um, so with that done, then I could install Shenzhen. Um, it's just Ruby gems. I just did gem install Shenzhen. Um, I have some issue with with Jim that it doesn't set the paths right, so I had to do it in sudo. Um, those are my notes. Uh, okay, so let's go to the command line. And what what this does is just adds um, a new command called IPA. Better? Okay. So this IPA command, if you just type it by itself, you get the typical little help screen. Um, if you type IPA build, it's probably going to fail because it doesn't know what to build. So you can set it up with another um, command attribute to say either build release or build debug. So since I want to build for deployment to test flight, I'm going to build the release version. Um, there's pretty good help if you type IPA-H and get all the stuff. Um, so if we build the release, IPA build-c release will build that. And that just generates the IPA file. And then if you want to deploy it to test flight, it's as simple as, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. Looking at the help again. You can do IPA distribute by itself, which is just alias to uh, to go ahead and use test flight, and it will actually interactively walk you through um, the things that it needs, or you can specify them all as command line parameters. So if you want to write your own build script or use it in a continuous integration environment, you can use it that way. But let's try just IPA distribute. Thank you. So that's for the API token. Um, this is actually under the account uh, setting in test flight. Um, so I grabbed mine earlier. Yeah, don't don't show that. I trust that you're going to edit that out. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. Um, team token, edit this out too. <laughs> well, this is actually a brand new, um, so to demo this, I just created a new team account that's totally um, for the purpose of demoing. It is. It's, it's not, not a real team account. Then it fires up your editor of choice. This is not really mine, but I'll use it anyway. Um, new build. Saves that, and now it's uploading it to uh, to test flight. If we go over to test flight, you should see. It's increased this to now. There's five builds. Um, you can also there's parameters from the command line to go ahead and set up who sees it, um, whether or not they should have permission right away. And I uh, started messing with those and wanted to demo that as well, but with the uh, Apple Dev Center down today, going any further was not going to happen. Because <laughs> I, I didn't want to use the provisioning profiles I used for the projects I actually 
bill for. So, <laughs> so that's about it. Um, it's not as exciting as Reveal and some of the others, but I think it's really useful if, um, if you like command line stuff. So, questions on that? Or? All right. I've never used it before, so this is new to me. <laughs> I'm still on an Apple move. But... Awesome. Cool. Well, that was stupid simple. Makes it even better. Cool. All right. Um, Alex, man, I, uh, I know you were wanting me to talk about Coca controls, and that's cool. I'll do that. Um, I was wondering if it's okay if I brought one or two more things into this too. Awesome. I will promise I won't make this You're the last guy long. Just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is Coco Controls, Coca Controls, however you pronounce it. I'm not really sure. Don't think it matters. But uh, if no one's heard of it, um, this is a really good repository of a lot of uh, examples and things like that. People uh, produce some uh, extra controls, new controls. This is kind of where I think personally that a lot of innovation comes from as far as iOS development in general. Uh, it's a really good way to get examples of how things work, uh, getting to test out you know, certain transitions, seeing just how tough it is to integrate, etc., etc., or even just if you've got something you're working on and you're looking for a quick example and maybe some helpful code, uh, you can probably find it on here. Uh, they have some, the navigation on is pretty easy. You can go through this and sort by ratings, sort, search for uh, iOS, OS X, etc., etc. Um, so what I'm going to show you, just real quick, I'm not going to go into any code, but just uh, some of the tools that I found on here. I've used them personally, I uh, still use them, um, and uh, even kind of branched off of one of them. Um, this is my little silly... Uh, attempt here, but uh, <laughs> this is actually uh, a branch off of uh, a tool called KN Semi View, Semi View Model, and I'm not showing mine, I'm showing his, it's much better uh, for now, but uh, so this is one tool in Coca Controls. Um, So all he does is he just kind of you know gives you a basic introduction and you click on things and you can see that he's got an app going on here but then you want to see what it does so this is the pushback navigation notice how s crazy slow that is right um, the, the transition is actually kind of cool um, but when the view gets bigger it starts to have issues and you'll find that in a lot of the tools is that these guys are going to produce the code about as quickly and as efficient, I mean, in a, probably not efficient, but about borderline efficient as possible just to kind of get an example out there because they're doing this for free, right? So that's uh, added bonus is all this is for free too. And uh, anyway, so that was the KN Semi View model. Um, all of these can be found, not that one, on uh, Coca Controls. Uh, this one is called RN Grid uh, Menu View. I thought this one was kind of cool. Uh, he does a small little blur view. As soon as you uh, click the show button, pops it up, a little nice little bubble effect and blurs the background. I thought that was kind of cool. His code is actually really clean too. So definitely check that one out if you're interested. This one I thought was just funny. 
Um, not that it's very spectacular, but uh, <laughs> it's the uh, his little alert pop down. I actually integrated this one in my app, and um, but if you notice, he's just kind of overriding the default alert view inside of iOS. Uh, this transition is probably the one I like the most. It just kind of falls down off the screen. <laughs> but I, so what I did was I kind of slowed it down to where it looked like a Titanic sinking. <laughs> if you hit cancel or whatever. But uh, so yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, JA side panels. This is an old school one. If anyone's used to Coca controls, uh, this is probably, in my opinion, the best example of a side view navigation control. Uh, this guy put a crap ton of work into it and uh, did some really awesome stuff with it. Uh, let's see. That's JA side panels. This one is called Chat Heads, just like Facebook's little uh, chat head pop up bottle. You've seen this? And uh, you can kind of drag this guy around wherever, click on him, shows a nice little pop up, click him again, he goes away, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, his code is everywhere, like scattered out, but still the concept's kind of cool, and I thought it was a neat little demo. MP uh, full transition. This was actually introduced by me uh, by another guy at uh, Kroger the other day, and well, not the other day, a few weeks ago. And this is what got me into wanting to know more about core animation and things like that. This guy uh, he developed. He took a lot of time. If you read his blog, he goes into a lot of detail about core uh, animation, what to do with it, how to best optimize it. So what he does is he kind of gives you some transitions on how to manipulate views into trans into like folding them out or you know flip them across. He's got all kinds of nice little controls and settings you can use with it. The code is very clean. It's awesome examples of how to do things right. Uh, PS stack view. Uh, this was something I just found the other day. Um, I kind of like oh but. You know what, before I show you this, let me show you a different one, because it leads up to this one. Let's see. Flip view. Yeah, I'll show you this one. That's cool, too. Yeah. This one is kind of uh, based off of the Flipboard tool or whatever. It was, uh, it's the first one I saw like this, and then that other one I was talking about is what I'll get to in a second. But this one kind of shows you another animation, see so how it does the little push back and then it kind of slides over it or whatever. This is something I think iOS 7 does by default now or something. Maybe not exactly, but the transition's there, right? Uh, but the problem with it, the good thing about this is it's a great example how to do it. The problem is, is you know, is, uh, you know, there's, you're going to find this a lot, is that sometimes the code is awesome, sometimes it's a little tough to follow, and <laughs> to me this one was kind of tough to follow, so I just kind of gave up on it. Uh, However, this guy did almost the exact same thing, except he did what I love. He made it stupid simple. Kept it very basic, and if you know how to get that view to push back, you can apply that easily. But notice that it's the exact same thing, he's just not doing the pushback, right? So that's kind of why Coca Controls is kind of strong, because you can find awesome, like, uh, great examples, and then find some that, uh, actually help out. This is a similar transition. I know I'm showing a lot of transition controls. I apologize, but those are the cool ones to me. This one has a similar little transition. Notice how it's kind of like folding it back and pushing it across. Let's see. That was that one. No. All right, well, that was in there. <laughs> so anyways, that's Coca controls. Pretty simple. Um, it, just about everything here you'll find is like uh, hosted out on uh, GitHub. So I just click one randomly. You'll click on the control, read a few basic comments if you want. You click download so source, and nine times out of ten, it'll take you to GitHub. About that other 10%, it's a zip file, and it'll just automatically download. But I prefer the ones on GitHub. But this leads me to where I was wanting to, to kind of just real quick talk about this. I don't, I know everybody here, unless you're living on a, a rock for the past four or five years, uh, GitHub's an awesome place to find stuff. Um, 
I started using a pattern. I don't know if everybody does this, if it's common sense or what, but uh, what I do is I found a control that I think I, that's kind of cool, right? And I'll go ahead and click on his name or her name or whatever. And uh, two things I'll do is I'll find out what they've started and people they're following. And then I'll just start like daisy chaining through all of them, trying to find cool examples, seeing what everybody's working on, and kind of seeing what it is that they think is special or whatever because these guys are building tools that everybody else likes. So if you can kind of figure out what they're thinking and how they're looking, you can almost do this stuff on your own. Uh, so what I did was I built, I've got a lot of things that I've started and looked at. Some of the cool things I'm looking at is like iOS development, Angular, JS, and you know, a bunch of other stuff. But uh, you can kind of build, it's almost like a bookmark. I mean, I don't know if you use Delicious. I do. But uh, I'm starting to use GitHub a lot more than that and treating it the same. So I go into it, find things that I like, and then I can just start, you know, uh, controls, I guess. Uh, just filtering out what it is I'm looking for. Didn't find anything that time, but if I do a push, start, you know, searching for things. Um, all right, so this is another site that I thought was kind of cool. I don't know if anyone's heard of this. I didn't uh, until just like last night. Coder's Grid's kind of cool. Shows you different things people are talking about, controls and stuff like that. This is iOS's page uh, or tag page or whatever. Kind of go through that and see what you like. This is another one, Powering Ideas. It's in basic code. Uh, they have similar kind of to con uh, Coco controls, but not as popular, I guess. But they still have some pretty good stuff. Maniac Dev is another one for searching for crap. Um, However, the one thing I have against them, and very much hate it, is uh, they'll start linking to it and say, oh, check out this control, and you'll expect to go to the site, but they're just sending you to another one of these. Eventually, you can get to the site, <laughs> but it takes a little bit of practice to realize what an ad is and figuring out when it is they're sending you back. But So they do this so they can generate ads and revenue off of you. I don't mind because they still give me cool resources. Uh, I still think this is a nice page to go to and check it out if you ever get a chance. Yeah. Go to objc.io. Objectivejc.io. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen this site, highly recommend it. I have not, so I will be booked. Lots of people this. will tell you what not to do. These guys are actually telling you what to do and actually give you good examples of how to structure your code in a nice, nice. way. I haven't seen anything else that compares to this yet. Have you seen in S hipster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this site, this site's not as good as that one, I'm sure. Uh, uh, but this one's the esoteric thing. Yeah. This, <laughs> this one, uh, I'm very. I'm gonna have to read through this. I've never seen this before. I don't even know how to navigate it yet. So <laughs> it's, it's just a website. You can't. I, yeah. That's it. I mean, that's so what the hell? Well, the, there's like <laughs> five, five or six articles per topic, and I think they're. Like a, they're about two months in. I think they're doing about. It's oh, okay. It's like I got you. Practice magazine. Oh. I was practice. Obviously, I'm a little slow sometimes, but I get it now, and that's awesome. So I'll definitely be checking this out. That's a cool resource to know about. Cool. Yeah, they cl they clearly know what they're talking about. They make sense. That's awesome. So they you said they're a few months old. Two. I, I think that's it. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. I mean, I, I didn't. Re I haven't read the concur. I've read the five review. Now, I, just so you guys know, I did talk really fast. I zoomed through that crap because I didn't want to, like, spend too much time and don't want to bore anybody. But uh, any questions about any of this? I've got tons of resources. Not that I uh, am a very reliable source, but, you know, uh, if you wanted to see what I'm looking at and get ideas or whatever, I use Delicious. Oh, I hope it, maybe everybody's used to it. I don't know. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but Delicious is just a bookmarking site. Uh, this is just kind of a side comment, I guess. Is it's kind of how you can bookmark anything that you're looking for and get back to it real quick. And uh, I use it for collecting just about everything. 
Uh, so I can, obviously I've got tags and all this other stuff. Got a bunch of iOS stuff. And so if you're looking for stuff, it's not just me, millions of other guys on here too, and gals too. And uh, so check that out if you want. Otherwise, that's all I got for it.